Well, I don't care about the yeah. chair here. Like, <laughs> here comes Ovechkin. One on three. Ovechkin down the wing. Drive. He scores. Ovechkin, overwhelming at 50. He scores on his first shot of this game, and he's got a little celebration here. I'm sure Don Cherry will have a reaction to that. Oh yeah, he's going to be <laughs> off for sure. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be <laughs> off. Love, love it. Can't, can't wait, can't wait to, uh, when he say something about you're looking. Oh, wait a Welcome back to Washington Post Live. Russ Taylor here and Alex Ovechkin became just the third player in the NHL history or the, in the NHL's history last night to record 50 or more goals in three of his first four seasons joining Mike Bossy and Wayne Gretzky. Not bad. Uh, number 50 came in the first period of the team's 5-2 win over Tampa Bay. Uh, but uh, the hot story today is what he did after the puck went into the net, as you just saw it. John Keeley, a senior writer for uh, the popular hockey blog on Frozen Blog, is here. What do you think? Did he cross the line, John? I don't think he did. Uh, I, as, as I wrote this morning, if this had happened, if he had had this celebration after his 45th goal or his 32nd goal, yeah, I mean, it really would have looked like a Terrell Owens moment. But scoring 50 goals, Russ, in hockey is so special. I mean, this is like 70 home runs in baseball. In fact, Ovechkin's going to be the only NHLer this year to score 50 goals. Um, yeah, I think he would do it over again. His coaches talked to him. It's not going to happen again. But in that moment, this historic moment, I think it was appropriate. What about the premeditated nature of it? The fact that Backstrom and Green knew he was going to do it. And Mike Green said afterwards that Ovi was expecting us to come do it with him, but I wasn't going to have any part of that. You know what I take from that? Rather than an individualized moment like a Terrell Owens, this suggests to me that Alex Ovechkin, it, 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 maybe the biggest moment of his season, was thinking about his teammates. He wanted this to be a team moment because they helped get him there. It just highlights that hockey is such a team sport. I, I, I think that's sort of lost in all of this. Yeah, but then his teammates decided they didn't want any part of it. At yeah. the time, they thought, as it was happening, they thought, they thought better of it. Yeah, and you had North Americans like Mike Green who probably in that moment were thinking, you know what, we don't do this in hockey. And you had Alexander Semin who probably would have normally joined Ovechkin in right. the celebration. He was in the penalty box at the moment, <laughs> so he couldn't do it. So that's, okay, so now, moving forward, even his head coach, Bruce Boudreaux, says, okay, well, you know what? Listen to what the, the head coach said. Here's Bruce Boudreaux on Alex Ovechkin and his moment. My only thoughts was, was it was his 50th, so maybe he wanted He was thinking of something special. I don't know. Uh, he ne has never done that with me that I've seen. Like, he celebrates, but I, I thought that was a little planned out. I love when he jumps into the glass and he shows the genuine emotion and, and everything. Uh, um, uh, that one wasn't uh, quite the same thing, I don't think. All right, so there's, there's, there's what he thinks. He, he, he's Canadian too, so he's thinking probably the same. He was probably cringing a little bit when he saw it. Yeah, or maybe he had Don Cherry uh, on his thoughts. But you know what? He used the word genuine, and I think that's right. Mm -hmm. And when Alex Ovechkin jumps into the glass, he does it here in Washington. He doesn't do it on the road. He's trying to share, and I think he does it very successfully, that genuine elation with his home fans here and this remarkable atmosphere that he almost singularly has created. And I think we need to keep that in mind as well. Now, it is going to be interesting to see what, what Don Cherry and, you know, he and Ovechkin have been going back, kind of back and forth yeah. for a couple of weeks. It's going to be interesting to see what is said on Hockey Night in Canada tomorrow night. But I like the way Ovi's kind of proactively going out and saying, you know what, bring it on, Mr. Cherry. Well, well that's the thing. And now if Don Cherry says it, Alex already had the first word. And he's the only player that I've seen do this. I mean, Don Cherry's been doing this on Hockey Night in Canada for a quarter of a century. Right. And Ovechkin's out there saying, you know what, Mr. Cherry, I'm, I'm here. Come at me. I'm ready. Yeah, he says old guy, old school, old, old ways and everything like that. Look, it was a great night for the Caps on a lot of fronts. First of all, they sort of bucked that trend of playing to the level of their opponent. Mm -hmm. Coming off the win over the Panthers, which was a great win because Florida was really bad you worried about what would happen like when they played Atlanta. They looked terrible. Then they go into Tampa and they and they beat the Lightning. So it's a great night. They win 5-2. The only and, and Ovi's 50th. The only bad thing that come out of this is after the game, Quentin Lang. The, the, the news about Quentin Lang suffered a ruptured spleen at some point in this game. Has to get rushed to the hospital. This is a guy that you can't help but root for. Spends yeah. his whole season in the AHL. Finally gets the call up. He's a he's a shot blocker, yeah. <laughs> like quite literally for yeah, the Caps. The image I have of Quentin Lang is from last season. He was on the ice in overtime in Pittsburgh, at the top, killing a five on three, mm -hmm. and he blocked two straight shots. It was just so heroic. Uh, so it's a horrible injury. He's going to be shelled for months. Mike Green also got banged up last night. We don't know how bad yet. It, he may play tomorrow. 
tomorrow night. He may not. Uh, but again, at this time of year, we don't get a lot of details on hockey injuries, so we do have to be concerned about that. We don't get details during the year a lot of times, but certainly it becomes less and less at this point. But how important are these final nine games now? Because, like, look, if you can give Mike Green a, a rest, it's probably the best thing to do, is it not? Yeah, and, and Sergei Fedorov has had a rest. I think the most important thing in the last nine games is to stay healthy. Yeah, you want to win, you want to you want to play disciplined hockey, try to give 60 minutes of effort, but m foremost, stay healthy because we know this team, if it's healthy, can do some damage. All right, John Keeley from On Frozen Blog, the popular hockey blog. Always great to have you on Washington Post Live. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, Russ. Dayton Flyer, by the way, very proud Dayton Flyer. <laughs> even happier today. We'll get into that when we get back to the tournament. But you know, it occurred to me. We had